TV Studios, it's Tandu Tuesdays, with your host, Robert Burley. And welcome, Tanzutians, Tanzanation. There it is. Thank you so much for joining us again. Another fantastic Tanzu Tuesday live on the Twitch. Hope you're all enjoying your lives today. With me as always is Tiffany and Paul. How are you both? Hi, Ours. I'm doing great. No smoke anymore, so that's good. That's very good. Hey. That is the West Western U.S. theme for the last several weeks, so. Yeah, we also uh, are in a, a low smoke time, so we're very happy about that. And uh, even our guest, Mario, Mario Gray. Hello, sir. Hi. You're down in oh. L.A. where there's also the that huge fire. It's right where I used to live, basically. So um, super scary times. Did you get much smoke from that? Yeah, we had a good few days of, of uh, haziness and a, a little bit of the, uh, the smell. It, it was more pronounced up north, but we just got... Uh, a diminished sun. Our sun was red for a solid week. Yep, yep. The sunsets look great, though. Yeah, we're awesome. To die for, to die. Never mind. We just got the smoke and maybe a tiny bit of orange, but mostly just gray and like 200, 300, like 200 something for the AQI and wearing masks indoor because it sucked. (laughs) Yep. Yeah, that's right. Our AQI down here went off the charts. It, at night, it was like 200 crazy. I'm at the beach, and it's 200 at night. I'm like, I can't breathe. Yeah, the fact that you're like right next to the ocean and all that breeze is, is incredible oh. that it's still that high. Uh, and you also, did. you had the big E last week, too, the earthquake. We did. We had an earthquake uh, today or two days ago, and uh, that was like in El Monte. You didn't feel it if you're mm-hmm. on the beach over here. There's been a couple yeah, of, there's okay. been another earthquake around here, though, uh, just a little bit further south, and that was like a three-point uh, eight or three point six year. Um, I, I think we're gearing up for a good earthquake season this year, and um, I, I, you know, just want to let everybody have some awareness there. It's twenty twenty. It's going to be an earthquake at some point. I've I've always wanted to be in an earthquake. You did, and it's never happened. Oh, hey, come over, Wait, stay over here for a while. Never experienced yeah. an earthquake. I've never experienced an earthquake. What? Are there, are there <laughs> earthquakes in Australia, just in general, or are you sure? There are, but not frequent. Um, I mean, Australia is so amazing. There's no fault lines. Is that okay. because it's not their fault? I don't know. I was, I was waiting for like a joke or something. That yeah. was the joke. <laughs> this is this yeah, is the problem with mind. you. Is your your game face is the same whether it's you're telling a joke or not. So we never know if you're just a joke. <laughs> I don't know anymore, man. Um. It's not their fault. All right. Uh, so, so thank you so much, everybody, for joining us again. Hopefully, uh, you're all doing well in your respective lands and uh, staying as safe as possible. We have with us uh, a repeat offender. He's part of our advocacy advocacy team. Uh, he's one of the spring advocates. Uh, I met him actually before even joined the team over some sushi with our good friend Josh Long. Uh, as, as we said before, he lives in L.A., but that's not where he's from. He just is there. He's in the Delray. So everybody, uh, welcome Mario Gray officially again. How are you, sir? Good, thank you. I'm using. Yeah. Um, I've got, I've got an interesting. Um, I've got an interesting story for you guys, really quickly. Thanks a lot, Bob, Tiffany, Paul, Mario. Oh. No, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> My um. My computer, you remember how we used to have that issue where our computers would sound like they're taking off like a jet rocket? Mm-hmm. Mine still does. Um, yes, mine has that. I, I actually have, okay, so this is an interesting story. I just want to let you guys all know that um, that I, I'm a, I'm a monkey, so like I get excited over the littlest things, okay? But um, so I have got a smaller computer, it's a Raspberry Pi, and I have a fan that automatically goes on and off whenever it gets over 44 degrees Celsius. And uh, I said, hey, why is this thing getting so hot? I'm not doing anything on it. It's just periodically turning on and off. It just means that, like the CPU is doing stuff like a cron task, right? And I thought, well, how do I stop that? And, and I got this weird like chuckle in my head, in the back of my head. I don't know what it is. Like the the, the, the server spirits are after me. Anyway, I took some, some water, a, a glass of water. And um, 
I just put it right on top of that computer and uh, it doesn't spit anymore. It, it doesn't, it, 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 it works. So it That's transfers the thing, is that the heat into the cup of water? Or what? I'm water cooling my Raspberry Pi with wow. a cup of water. And I just thought that like everybody needed to know that. <laughs> but isn't it a typical drink with Raspberry Pi like a like a milk or something like that? Maybe? Yes. You'd use a <laughs> buttermilk. Yes. Come on now. And Come a very now. fancy cheese if Butter you want one. Ooh, very I fancy. do that. Yeah. Cheese on a pie is actually delicious. Dude, actually, um, raspberries and cheese. Oil. Now, so if, you, if that works, ahead. that means you could cook hot pot on your raspberry pie. Who's got hot pot on the brain right now? I think okay. I think you can do that with your computer if you just turn the fan off and, and put like a boiling, put a pot of water on top of the CPU right. yeah. chamber. Gosh. I know they've done that. I've seen a guy make eggs on his Intel CPU years ago. I mean, that's that's something that, I would love to try on uh, during a the next time we're live, because remember, if you don't remember the last time I was live in the last like year, God, two years ago, that I was live in maybe uh, Turkey or Paris, I dropped water all over my laptop, and uh, oh God, it, it, it was pretty bad. <laughs> I had to have my laptop. My laptop literally it violently didn't explode; it just violently shut down, and um, I got to toss it into some. Um, some rice and and that that Did helped increase the uh, moisture and, and such yeah it helped it it, it okay. you know stopped the computer from dying but um i just thought if i can start with the water and i wouldn't have to worry about anything anymore i can just have water all the time and if i can it, it, these raspberry pies are portable and they have enough cpu power to do everything that you know you typically want to do especially if you're not uh transferring your screen on zoom that means I can just, you know, launch it on an HDMI connector and start coding away. And um, I'll have warm water at the end of the demonstration. And if I spill any water, I'm fine. Like, I, I've already been uh, ready for this forever, you know. So you're prepared. I'm so prepared. your Raspberry yeah. Pi is portable and your water is potable and we're all good to go. Uh, I, can, I can boil wow. water wherever I go. I can just keep that thing going and maybe make a crack an egg on it, make some soup. Might have to do a quail egg so it fits on the CPU. Oh, it's little, that's true. It's a much smaller. We'll call it like yeah. spring drop yeah. soup or something like that, where it's just <laughs> I'm compiling spring apps all day and, and using the heat <laughs> from that to cook my eggs. In a previous yeah. job uh, in IT, they had like recorded a video of one of the laptops that someone brought in that actually like cut a little, little a tiny bit. Like th there's like this midget little fire and then smoke that came out of the MacBook, like in when someone took it to IT. Sorry, what kind of fire? Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Just don't. Just don't. It's the mini fire. <laughs> I am getting an important it's communication. Teeny weeny little. Fire. I'm tired. Okay, I woke up so many times last night. Uh, yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. It's. It's uh, it's getting quiet outside. None of the fireworks are going off. My computer is always running because I'm up all night coding, and and I'm kind of wondering why is it so quiet out there. I'm used to hearing firecrackers, but I guess the further away from we away we are from July the fourth, it's like yeah, people are running out of their supplies. I yeah, I guess so. I guess they're forgetting like it, it's sooner or later. It's just going to go back to guns, and we're just going to hear pop pop of a helicopter every hour. Yeah, like we just, like we used to. Yeah, the good old days. And the good old days. <laughs> good old days. <laughs> good old days of LA. Um, well, good. Well, well, I feel informed about my warming water techniques using technology. Yeah. Uh, and I also know that Paul has some hot pot on the brain because uh, mm, he, he sure cooked. He, he showed on his little Instagram stories how to like a little self-contained hot pot. Uh, thing so that looked delicious. Mario, it was a it was a self cooking hot pot. So, Paul, you're the Kubernetes local Kubernetes whiz here. Oh. Would, would it would it matter to connect a um a meat probe to a sensor if I can update my cluster depending on the nature of meat that it thinks I'm cooking? Like if I'm cooking chicken, right? Like it's got to get to 170. Then, like Kubernetes, 170. That's overcooked. Huh? Oh, okay. One seventy. That's too. That's too high. 
170 is for okay let's just say it's like one what 40 for for for, for chicken in, in terms so when of i'm doing when i'm doing chicken i'll do 145 for the breasts and then about 180 for the thighs okay so like um, the, the, the people the people that have science and stuff might tell you 165 but that's hot garbage it's overcooked that's a, <laughs> okay though so that's just overcooked meat that's fine i, I can deal with it um, there are probes that can connect to a USB port, right? No, no. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's actually a Go, bo a Go based uh, library of tool of stuff to take uh, temperature thermometers from meat thermometers and then control fans and stuff. Um, one of the Azure advocates, I think it might have been Brian Ketelson, uh did that because he's got one of the fancy um, Myron Mixon smokers, and he felt the need to write some controllers for it in Go. Oh, wow. So there is definitely uh, tooling out there. And then you use, like, you can get probes that plug into Raspberry Pis and stuff like that yeah. to get, like, fairly lightweight. Or you can just spend $30 on Amazon and get one that already does everything for you. I mean, but I... That's I, not fun. No, that's not fun, no. You needed to kick off, like, a compilation of something or, or a deployment. Yeah, you should compile it into Spring so you can have, like, a... Um, uh, a metrics actuator that's showing your temperatures and you can just like curl against the actuator to get the uh, current temperatures and stuff. That sounds really And then you can hook it straight into Prometheus. Oh, um, speaking of like, uh, ad, of, this is not an ad. So I had this idea to to take radiation sensor data and, and collect them. Um, so I, I guess Noah did this already. It's called ERAD. And um, sorry, this is... This is like tangent to the whole sensor data because I, I love sensor data. I think we all do. I mean, maybe, I don't know, maybe we don't. Um, well, with the air quality right now, everybody's going to the purpleair.com and all these other sensors to figure out. They what's don't going all on, agree. So. Like, I've seen them like 20, 30, like, like apart from different websites, which is yeah. really annoying. So, so there is a, uh, there's a project called ERAD, which is uh, Empirical Radiation Model. Uh, and if you guys are interested, go to spaceweather.com. They publish. Uh, There's no weather in space. I know. <laughs> There's solar it's winds. Cold. It's cold and it smells solar like dirt meat over there. That's that's all we got. Um, <laughs> you know. Um, so so anyway, this, these guys they 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 uh, uh, they apparently like liaised with a bunch of like air people and said, hey, why don't you just like take our sensors with us and we'll record the rad information, the Geiger Mueller counts. Um, so they did that, and for about maybe several months, they collected all this data. Now they have a nice little chart about what the United States looks like in terms of um, flight radiation dosages. Um, and it tells you exactly, like, how much you're going to expect to get from any point in the United States to any other point in the United States. Uh, and it's kind of a, it's kind of interesting how, how high the radiation can get. Um, if you're going from, like, Van Nuys to Teterboro, I don't know what that is, Teterboro. Does anybody know where Teterboro is? These are all small airports, and Van Nuys is a small airport. So you, uh, well, you take the first left after you get New through Jersey. Albuquerque. Okay, let's just say Newark to Los Angeles. Uh, oh, right. 21,000 you. feet. You're, you're getting 60.5 times the level of radiation that you'd normally get at sea level. Um, and that's just from a six-hour flight. But is that if you're on the outside of the plane or on the inside of the plane? <laughs> uh, I don't think <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, that's a good question. I think it is from – because you already are experiencing it. I don't know if it's from the outside or inside. Um, actually, I didn't read whether they said that these are internal measurements or external measurements, right. but I know right. the radiation should be able to penetrate the hull, um, <laughs> and you should just receive it, uh, just cosmic, like, you you receive all sorts of stuff. Um, anyway, it's just... I'm, I'm receiving a lot of stuff right now, that's for sure. <laughs> Cosmically and karmically. <laughs> well, yeah. Anyway, they call it the hot flights. They call it daily hot flights. Um, oh, and, and, and like, so then it just tells you like what the back hottest to putting a glass are. of water on the outside of the plane. And how hot will it be <laughs> when you get when you land in New Jersey? Got it. It's okay. just it's normal cosmic <laughs> cosmic ray stuff. So it's like it's really interesting to see what the radiation level goes up to and goes back down to. It's because yes. it's like getting I a tray yeah. for a minute. You know, it's all yeah. it's fun now, stuff. Now, if you wear a if you wear a pyramid hat, does that protect you from the radiation? Yeah. As long as it's got a foil lining on the inside. Um, for, yeah, no, let's not talk about Faraday cages that, that requires right. a lot more. Yeah. Um, there, there's a really cool thing called, uh, there, there's a lot of things I wanted to talk about. I want to talk about, 
I still want to talk about. So I'm probably going to give this talk in like multiple sessions, I guess, because I have a lot. I have a lot of things to talk about that your average um, developer will want to know. And I, I kind of felt like everybody needs to know these things in practice, uh, but then distilling them in, into practice, like getting all the the right assignments for uh, Kubernetes, um, you know, state transfers or or, or probe checks, and making yeah. it all like easily to digest. Um, we'll we'll take a little bit of a tiny bit of time, a little bit of time. So I, I want to go over a couple of things like liveness probes and, and graceful shutdowns, uh, and maybe some config mapping uh, to to balance that out. Uh, because so that's I, why you asked me about Kubernetes, because that's, yeah, that's the topic what, that was for the my day. question. My uh -huh. question was, what is the easiest way, the easiest way to create an environment, totally an environment um, uh, exposed uh, config property? Um, that was that was my question. I can ask that later, um, because that, that's like another half an hour from now. Um, well, will everybody say hi to Tasha right now, because she's on my way. Say hi. Uh, hi, Tasha. Oh, hi, Tasha. Hey. Oh, and Hello, we have Tasha. a JG. Yep, we got Deshaun Java Grant here. So, so, so what we want to do is, um, so I guess, I guess why, like, why don't you go into it? Why don't you, why don't we like, you know, yeah. like get get going? Yeah. So, well, great. I I'm going to do this in Kotlin. Um, so if anybody has any like qualms with Kotlin, please don't like hurt me. I I like Kotlin. I think you should all like Kotlin. Um, Can we do it in PHP? Can we do it in PHP? <laughs> so, no, can, does not compute, can't hear you. Sorry, that, <laughs> breaking up. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. Like runtime exception error. Just go away, Paul, just go away. <laughs> oh, oh. I, I mentioned JavaScript once and, and I and I almost got like hurt. Um, so let me share my screen. I'm gonna, uh, I guess I can start with start, uh, I guess I can start with the spiel. And um, that spiel can just go out into start.spring.io. But first, let me share my screen so I can uh, see how to do that if I can. Can I share my screen? Yes, I can. Okay, let's share with desktop, you guys. And um, there we go. So hopefully. Yeah, you did it. You shared your screen. Yay. But can you see Zoom in the background too? Zoom is probably still there. No. No. no? Oh, really? Does, uh, does it actually take Zoom off of the thing? Oh, that's really cool. Sure it does. Oh, that's nice. It, it's nice enough to do that. Okay, so um, yeah. So what we want to do at this uh, particular juncture is uh, create a service. We want to just create a standard web service that does some things. Uh, one of those things is it it is able to uh, to tell the application it should be shut down. Uh, should it be in a container service? Um, Kubernetes will 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 do the the uh, ready the liveness probe and find that it is in a state of of down and then restart the application. Um, and in order to do that, I'll just create a little a little jig, a countdown latch, right? So first, first, let's get out. Let's let's go into the main subject. I'm, I'm getting all excited about talking about the code, but I haven't talked about the code yet. So I'll create a, a, a uh, Kotlin application um, using Maven and uh, Spring Boot 234. And I'm going to I'm going to call this guy buoy because I think of things in the water as a uh, well, buoy. Buoy is like the most simple instrument I could think of, and this is all I really want is something that will help me instrument my applications. Um, so let's just call it a, a demo um, liveness. Come example. And by buoy, you mean the thing that floats? Yeah, pretty much. You know, it's I, B U O Y. I, oh, B O B U O Y or B O U I? B U O Y. Okay. B U O Y. There we go. Yeah, I always get that right. Every time I hear it in my word in my head, I hear buoy. And it doesn't sound right. It just sounds like somebody's saying something backwards, but they're still talking, kind of thing. So I want actuator. And um, actually, I only want two things in here. I want actuator. Um, and I for the for now, I'm going to use uh, WebFlux to expose a, a little web service and uh, web boot actuator to expose the liveness probes. And then I can um, go ahead and generate that. And buoy. So we have a new application called buoy. I will go into my workspace. And create a new directory. 
How do you spell Bowie? Is it B O U I U O Y? Good God. Such a weird word. I mean, if you say it too many times, it, you probably turn into like, I don't know. Go into a B O O E Y. I don't know. Bowie. It's a buoy. All right. So, what we're going to do is create a little buoy um, and we're going to let it. It's not going to be a pinging buoy. Like, you can do a ping service where it just, you know, you could ping pong. Um, I wanted to basically have control of the application's uh, life cycle. And obviously you can do that, but I need Kubernetes to have control of its life cycle depending on um, how I see the application state. So what I'm going to do is uh, create like a, hi. What I will do is create a, a little uh, web service that can take it out of service so that Kubernetes will restart it. And then I will also demonstrate what it looks like locally, um, how they get enabled, and et cetera. Um, so these are for liveness, readiness probes, and the graceful shutdown, how that works. Um, I'll get into that in a second. So what we want to do is create a new project. And that project looks like this application here. Um, what I normally like to do is uh, get rid of this stuff here. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes people have a you know their own objectives about how code should look, and I do too. But nobody's going to PR me today. Um, this is going to be uh, JVM static, so that we can run uh, directly off of the uh, main class. All right, so the next thing we may not PR you, but we are going to be sitting here quietly judging you. Oh, I know. Oh, 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 quietly, quiet, quietly, sir. Quietly. Well, if we're depending on how quiet we are, as long as we're less loud than the mechanical keyboard. Jeez. <laughs> it's like the view or something all, all of a sudden. So I'll create a countdown latch that uh, will affect, safely count down from three. So if I hit it in point three times, the countdown latch will be uh, emptied. And then I can say, great, so there's there's nothing to count down. Let's change the state of the application. That'll be kind of my, my gimmick. And uh, the next thing I want, I just want a little property value. Uh, I want to be able to transfer that from like a config map later on. And then Kotlin, uh, to do value correctly, you have to use a slash dollar sign and then open up closing curly braces. So I'll say um, demo.app.message. Colin, uh, hello. So that will be my default value in case uh, I don't receive that data. Um, and we'll turn that into a private late minute. Um, so this is a string that we got from our uh, environment. So this is ostensibly going to be an environment message. Um, and then the next thing I want is a, um, I want an event publisher. So I need to be able to change the, um, the the event. I need to be able to push out an event to the Spring Framework saying, "Hey, this thing isn't in a, in a is in a certain state." Uh, I can do that with this. I relate to it. Our um, event publisher. Uh, publisher. Application event publisher. Publisher. Okay. Uh, so we have our three variables. I guess we don't need the next one yet. So let's just go ahead and uh, say bean. And uh, what I want to do here is I want to take a router. I'll just create a function called routers. Uh, nothing too fancy. Um, literally, I'm going to take. Um, I'm going to use Kotlin DSL, uh, and Kotlin DSL transforms into standard, you know, Java code uh, for router functions. Um, what I'll do is I'll say, hey, I want to get a post, and I want to say, if I get a post to slash count, um, then do the following. Uh, I guess I can say latch dot count down, so that'll that'll count the latch down by one, uh, and then I can say server response dot okay. Um, what else would I do? Body, yeah, mono dot just latch dot count uh, long class dot Java. So essentially, give it a stream. This is a reactive Webflux, obviously. So give it a stream. 
um, the latch the latch's value is what's going to come out of that post command. So every time I post to count, it'll just count down once, um, and and that that's all it'll do. Uh, so nothing, no behavior beyond um, static decrementing or standard decrementing here. But the next thing I need to do is um, I need a way to to make sure this compiles correctly. Uh, I need a way to say when that status from that lat from that countdown latch, um, when that countdown latch reaches zero, uh, then I need to change the application state. So hopefully this project has done it the right thing. It should have. So I'll say go ahead. Um, on latch uh, depletion. And I'll call it uh, a command line runner. Command line runner. Uh, command line runner will take arguments that I don't need to use yet. Uh, I can save our executor. Um, executors. There we are. Dot new single threaded executor. Okay, so I guess this. Scheduled executor. There you go. Okay, we wanted to we want to schedule this uh, because what we want to do actually it doesn't need to be scheduled. But what we're going to do is we're going to let it run once and then uh, eh, actually it doesn't it probably doesn't need to be probably doesn't need to be scheduled anymore. I I I've have it scheduled in the past, uh, but now it's just going to sit on a thread and, and wait for uh, something to happen. So I'll say something like executor dot um, schedule. Oh, okay, so that's why I did it that way. So I need a scheduled executor. That's okay. Very rigid with the commands. So, um, okay, so uh, schedule a runnable uh, to run every frequency uh, delay of current is zero, and then run all the time. Um, however, this thing won't run more than once, um, and you'll see why it only runs once. So, oh, by that latch that'll wait. Uh, this is wrong almost. I can probably just refactor this to get rid of the schedule. Um, so, latch that'll wait will block that particular thread. Um, but when we cross latch that'll wait, we now have, um, we now know that we have zero in our countdown latch. So, we can go ahead and, and, and push the event. Um, so, that's all that this does. This is just a, uh, a gimmick to push the button. That tells our application we are in uh, fail state because when we when our countdown latch reaches zero, we're going to be in fail state. So we'll do that. So we'll say availability uh, availability changed event of uh, publish uh, application context. Uh, this okay, that's good. Um, Down latch is depleted. Um, and finally, we have to push a um, we have to push the event, the liveness state. Dot what would that be? Broken. Okay. So what did we do here? Good. So latch depletion will just ensure that as soon as it's down to zero, um, our countdown latch uh, no longer um, well, our, our server will go offline. That's what we want. We want our server to go offline when, when countdown latch reaches zero, which could be a fun thing, you know, if you have, if you don't, if you don't want data in memory too long and you want those things to shut down, um, there you go. Just pull the plug on it programmatically. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. So we have that. I think there are properties that we must have now. In order for, for what's going to happen is, um, what will happen, if I just run this right now, I could show you maybe in uh, spring boot colon run, what will happen is actuator uh, should ex execute. I didn't configure actuator completely here. 
uh, so I should actually complete it here. Uh, actuator will take, um, will have its own context and it will expose its endpoints. Uh, what I want to do is actually tell Actuator, hey, um, expose the liveness and readiness endpoints as well. If you've already you know, read the documentation, it says you, you need to enable those uh, endpoints. Um, and currently we have two existing endpoints uh, right now, so that's good. So let's see what happens. Let's go to HTTP colon 8080 slash actuator. Are we running? 8080 slash actuator slash. Actually, never boarded. Am I running? Am I not on the right URL? Is it probably not enabled? Possibly. That's probably a problem. So let's say management.endpoints.health. There you go. Ah, I was looking for that. Food. Why isn't that being picked up? Hmm. Okay. It's kind of being picked up. I'm not sure if I didn't include something. No, it looks like I did. This is the thing that I want to do. Um, there it is. This guy here. So I want to be able to shut down this guy by, by just issuing with a command like uh, HTTP localhost colon 8080 slash actuator slash quit or slash shutdown and have my application shut down on its own and uh, let the container manager do its work about shutting it down. Uh, that's kind of important for me. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're going to include all of the endpoints. Uh, we're going to ensure that we have our health groups uh, for live, liveness, liveness. And we're going to turn on our health probes. Um, we haven't configured anything to look at our health probes yet, uh, but we will. That's where we have to tell our, our, our pod later on that we have health probes. Um, we can do that in a minute. If we have a server shutdown, it should be graceful. That means it should it should continue taking uh, requests for a set period of time, um, and that means that you actually have time for requests that are already in flight to complete. Um, and then you know once a once a once a threshold has been crossed, like say five seconds, um, all of those complete all those in flight processes can be you know thoroughly done and we can exit the program, or we hope we'd exit the program with everything complete. Um, so it depends on the application, I suppose. Uh, some applications have longer request response times than others. Timeout per shutdown phase. So this is a simple application. It could be one second, or it could be five seconds. It'll wait five seconds before uh, giving 500s, before giving um, error states. Okay. Uh, so now that we have this configured, let's go ahead and rerun that locally and then play with it and then we'll put it into a, 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 a Kubernetes pod and then we'll play with that some more. Uh, and then we'll, we'll do some things to uh, shut down or restart itself. Like I said, I, I set the, uh, the countdown latch to three and when it hits three, it should shut down the application. Kubernetes will shut it down, not me. I, um, the application here, my local box, has nothing to do that. Uh, so I have to be running in a managed environment uh, for that to actually you know, work. Um, there we go. It could be possible. Yes, it is absolutely possible that I'm running another. Um, yeah, there we go. So yeah, I was running another uh, port forwarder on port 8080. Look at me, just running ports all the time. Uh, let's see. Is it health liveness? Oh. 
two, one. Okay, so what we want to see is hopefully a graceful shutdown um, from here. Okay, yeah, that's that's because it doesn't have um, automatic uh, rejigging. Uh, so let's see if I can do that here. Actuator dot shut. Okay, shut down. Bye bye. Graceful shutdown. Okay, so at least that does it. Um, the other thing I didn't I didn't show you was uh, I could shut it down, but what? One of the important steps here is to understand how um, I can I can tell it to shut down like I just did. Or one of the important steps is really um, watching it change states. And I and I meant to do that just now. I meant to actually watch it change states, which is I'm going from a running state up to a, a failed state down. Um, and so I forgot to do that yet. So let me do that one more time. So let me hit count three times. Um, so I'll post post. Um, and let me get, let me do one more get. Um, let's see. What is the name of the endpoint? It's readiness. There it is. So it's, sorry about that. We'll forget every now and then. Spell it right. Actuator health readiness. That's new. Let's see what we have here. Actuator schedule task metrics, mappings, loggers. Oh, I probably, yeah. Yep. Hi. There you go. One more time. Okay. Um, I may have misspelled. Yeah. Mario, that line you're on right now is still misspelled. It's, it's either missing the T or it shouldn't have. It. Yeah, I deleted it. You got it. Oh, it should actually handle that. Uh, I, that's what I meant to do. There's there's a lot to do here, and um, managing it all in my head right now. So thank you for that. So if I did slash actuator health uh, readiness on the next one. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, it, it just, it takes longer to run. Okay. So now it's up. Okay. So let's see what happens if I make it go down. Uh, what I'd like to do is post three times and see that readiness is, uh, Did I do that wrong? Did I do that wrong? Did I? It should have been zero. It should have been broken. Hi. Really? Really? Okay, really. Okay, for now. Hey, Mario, just out of curiosity. So there's some question about performance and just giving a 200 response in the headers, but not actually having a body as being a like a performance optimization for your readiness and liveness checks. How easy would that be to do? Like, uh, for instance, you wanted to you wanted to give uh, a 201 or something or two. No, I want the 200 just an empty body. Oh, uh, actuator will give you a JSON report, but you just want a 200 or you want like a 500 basically. Um, yeah, yeah, because the, the readiness check itself isn't looking at the contents, it's just looking for the 200. And so a lot of folks are saying for like optimal performance and not, you know, having your readiness like, check slamming your thing to just keep it as simple as possible and like have a... Like don't, basically don't don't send response bodies, just send a, you know, actual... Uh, just send the head status. on Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Uh, I believe you could configure the... Yeah, if you go to the actuator uh, documentation, you'll find out how to uh, change the output of that body. Okay. Cool. Because what you want to do is, like a, like you said earlier, like I don't want all that stuff. I just want, uh, 
I just want to be able to uh, tell it yes or no. Like I, I just need a 200. I don't need a body. Okay, so this is an earlier one. I'm still up. Like, yeah. So so okay. Don't worry about that. We're we'll be fine for now. Um, I have I have changed something. Something did change, but that's okay. That's why I'm here. Okay. Um, so I could shut it down. I should probably uh, I should probably just go ahead and and push this into a pod somewhere. So let's do that. And what what I would do is um oh I'm still in the same directory. Okay. What I would do is I would probably um, use a YAML file. Um, you can also use a command to I guess if you're if you're really good at the command line. Uh, like I'm trying to be good at the command line, but the command line is uh, it's a lot more things. It's like IP tables a little. Um, in other words, using kube control to can to change the aspects of your of your deployment. Um, it's a little like using IP tables, just a little, not not exactly. But you, you probably see where I'm getting here is at some point you become I, the guy who knows IP tables on the team. That's you. That's you, Paul. You're you're that guy that knows IP tables. Um, I learned Kubernetes so I could forget IP tables. So I am no longer that guy. Wow. Okay. So what I did was this, and this is just a command that I'm using. Um, this is the YAML file. I can get, let me get the command out. Okay. Hi. So, what is the normal command? It's k create service cluster ip um, demo tcp equals 80, 80, 80, 80. Uh, So, this is just a command to get that YAML file out. Um, I want a YAML file that I'd like to have a node port. I haven't yet configured a node port from service. Uh, maybe that's something I will do to make my life a little easier. Cluster IP demo TCP. Yeah, that's right. Cluster IP. I does not like cluster IP. No, you were right. I think instead of dash dash TCP, I think you just do dash dash port. Okay. You know, I can do port, but I will use port. Dash dash port. Okay. All right. Well, TCP. Well, I, anyway, I got the configuration file working. Um, the whole configuration file, right? If there's a whole configuration file, file in here. Um, and I added extra things to it. I, I had to add... Um, the live I have to add the liveness probe and readiness probes. Um, like in the Kubernetes documentation, it specifies where those are. And if I can get to those, well, we're not on the screen. Sorry. Um, the Kubernetes documentation tells me to use these guys here: liveness and readiness. Uh, failure threshold for liveness is five times ten seconds each, and readiness is is a. Uh, 30 times 10 seconds each. So you have a lot of time, a lot of time to wait for it to become ready. Uh, whereas live, it'll it'll only know it's not live for five attempts after it'll take a minute for it to know that it's not live anymore. But since this application isn't uh, sending liveness probes the way that I described it in my code, um, I'm going to just let it shut down. I'll just send a shutdown argument to it instead and see um, that it shuts down and cleans up that pod. Um, I think that's at least what I want to go for here. So, uh, in other words, how do I how do I hoist this jar file that I've created? Like, if I've done maybe clean install, all I have is a jar file. How do I get that into um, Kubernetes? How do I get that into Docker, or how do I get it into Amazon AWS or something like that? Right. Um, so, I guess the easiest way to do that is by using the default build pack plugin that comes with Spring Boot. Since I guess two. Uh, Three, three, maybe sometime in May we got that. Um, build image. 
So what this will do is, I guess, it's a really, it's a very comprehensive. This is um, this is one of the most comprehensive pieces of the Spring framework that I have used, and that a lot of people, I, I guess, can see that it is pretty comprehensive, uh, because it goes so far into the system. This this is like literally tendrils into your into your deployment environment, and um, well, the first thing that that I can get is to running to running a, a a standard jar file on on Docker, right? So we can all get it to run on Docker, right? Docker run. Um, but most of all, I I want it to run on um, on Minikube. I want it to run on my AWS, you know, Kubernetes farm or whatever. Um, and so doing that actually takes a little bit more. Um, the, the tooling is really amazing. It's already there. It's it's the learning parts um, and getting it right all the time. And um, those are those are really well fleshed out. They're documented well. Um, I have an application that I want to use it for. And also I want this demo application to do the same. So what I will do is uh, say docker tag um, buoy snapshot ray demo buoy. So I'm going to push this to my repository. I want to push this to my repository, and then um, I want it that that configuration file that I created earlier, that YAML file. I wanted that to pick up. Um, I want that to pick up my my Docker image uh, and install it into a pod, right? Um, I don't want anything significant like a database system yet, but rather I I just want an HTTP endpoint that I can ping. Um, that I can get results from, and then I can shut down, um, and then I can ask if it's up or down, or have Kubert or have Spring Framework, which, given the right uh, parameters, will detect that you have liveness ready probes uh, at startup. It'll it'll detect that you're in a Kubernetes environment per the document. Um, now, what we want to do is is wrap it up here. So I have Docker, have this thing in Docker. Now I can rerun that command again. Uh, cluster IP. Um, so that's the wrong one. This should be um, what was the name of it? Mario Gray. So that's buoy. TCP. Yeah. Oh. You mean to do create deployment? Instead of create service, do I? No, I wanted a service. Yeah, so I definitely want a service. Oh, I thought you were trying to deploy the uh, application itself. Well, not yet. Yeah. So okay, I have everything that I need here. Um, although, uh, let's see, it's Mario Gray slash buoy. Now, let's just go into here. Let's see. The deployment YAML. Um, I guess this is how it should work. Yes. Uh, just make sure that the name is right because I know I, I did Docker push my R gray slash buoy, but I, I think it was something slightly different. What did I Docker push this as? Oh, demo dash buoy. That's why. Okay. So it's this guy here. Okay. So I. I should be able to do something like k apply and say uh, deployment.yaml. But before I do that, um, make sure I don't have anything else running under that name, okay? So nothing else is running under that name. Okay. No. Okay, so that's running. And this is a command for port forwarding. Um, so remember how I asked if I can get it to run as a node port without having to port forward it? That's because I'm that's because I'm lazy. Um, I'd rather not have another command if, if I can just tell it 
hey, con configure yourself as a uh, as a node port rather than a cluster IP. Um, but that's that's for another day, I guess. Are you, are you running in uh, Minikube? I, I'm running this as mini. Yeah, I'm running this as Minikube. I know if you're using like an if Amazon or something, then you're going to use cluster IP, right? Yeah. So with Minikube, I think you can do Minikube IP in the service name. Uh, and if you're using a, a, like a type of load balancer, it will give you like a, a local host and a port that you can use. And it kind of simulates having a load balancer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so one of the, one of the great things about discovering and, and creating material is that every now and then you will hit a point in which uh, your demo either does or right. It doesn't work or it does work. Oops. Nope. 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 That, that, that don't do that. I want to do HTTP get health. Yeah. Right now, so this is what I've done. So let's make sure that this looks good. So what I've done thus far is deployed it to a pod, but I configured it in a really bad way. I've configured it in such a way that it will always reset. You know what I mean? Um, so what I have here is, tell me if this looks right to you, Paul. Now, I have a liveness probe that mm -hmm is set to get on path actuator health liveness. Um, and I have my failure, failure, failure threshold and the periodic uh, seconds. Um, my question is, um, that's working only because of this readiness here, but something else is causing it to go out. Something else is causing my application, the thing that I sent to my farm to yeah. not uh to deregister itself now i'm now i'm actually going to yeah. restart it will restart. so the live the liveness check is actually killing your pod right the live so what you can what you can do is there's a there's a setting to um tell the liveness check to wait say 60 seconds or two minutes before it starts running and that lets your applications get up and running before it starts pinging it because oh. what happens if it's if it's a bit slow to start, the liveness check will fail and start killing your application before it ever starts. Yeah, you end up in this like infinite loop of it never starting because it doesn't think it's working. Okay, that's yeah. It's initial delay seconds. Thank that's you. It. And it should go in line with yeah there. Uh, 30. I would do like 120 or 300. You can always bring it down later. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, that guy, thank you for that. That guy will. Just die. right now what it's actually showing us up ready one of one. Oh, it was but it restarted for it's yeah. already got four restarts it's yeah it's just so, starting so, like so this is pretty common when that liveness check happens because like it'll fail three or four times and then eventually it'll process just enough time to start before the liveness check failure Um, the, the first, so, so essentially the first time I was running liveness checks and doing the whole idea was, um, was where I realized that there's not enough time before this thing starts, before it'll start kicking it off. And, um, yeah. I was like, okay, well that, I have to fix that somehow. I just, uh, did I kick off two of them? What, what did I do here? No, what happened was you deleted the pod, so it then created a new pod because it was a deployment. Oh, I see. 
Yeah. So if you do a kubectl get replica set, you'll see you actually have two replica sets now. Ooh. Really? Yeah, you basically, you, you fought with the deployment controller and you lost. I did. Yeah, it's, that's going to happen a few times. Yeah, I'm pretty sure about that. How does it? Okay, so let's see if it just goes down. I wonder if it'll go down by itself or what. Oh yeah, and because it's a deployment, it's going to wait for the new one to be fully online before it deletes the old one. Okay. Just realize that. So that's probably why you've got two pods showing. Did I say pods? I meant post. Okay, I was able to shut it down, but like, mm, yeah, that's, it should restart at least. Okay, well, it killed it. That's fine. So it just killed it instead. All right, so that's this guy here. So the um so so Paul, yeah, the the Kubernetes administrator here. Um, what will it take to? Can I update that YAML that that deployment um, in real time, right? Mm -hmm. And have it make you know uh, restart the the pod. Yeah. Why awesome? don't you do kubectl? Edit deployment and the name of your deployment. You need a space. Um, wait. So, what was the name of my deployment here? It was demo. It was just demo, I think. Demo. Yeah, and then if you just scroll down, if you can like add like a label uh, or. Uh, okay, it was all right. So, so what I would usually do is actually add an environment variable. Um, so after, say, after image pull policy, uh, just add an extra line and do env colon, uh, and then hit enter, and then dash dash name equals whatever you want to call it. Wait, sorry, not dash dash name. What yeah, this I meant, is no, I meant space space name. Yeah, just I meant space space, not, yeah. Uh, give it a name, whatever, doesn't matter, foo. Uh, and then a value. Of whatever. Oh, I know what I meant Don't when I said quotes. dash. It's a, uh, is it okay? It doesn't need quotes. Oh, it's it a, doesn't? It's a YAML string. Okay. No. But uh, you do need, directly under the E, you need a, you need a dash because this is a, a, a list. So go up. Yeah, go left one, go down one. A uh, name. So directly underneath the E, that should be a dash. Yeah, perfect. Mm. Now save that. Uh-oh. We, it cancelled. Yeah. All right. So there's actually an easier way. I don't know why I'm making you do it hard. So there's a there's a way to tell a deployment to roll itself. Tiffany, do you remember what that is? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, save. How do you save this? What, what am I using? Uh, Nano. What is the save shortcut for Control, Nano? Uh, 
control. I can't remember. I think it's, it's too long. the X, doesn't it? Yeah, if you do, con if you do control time? X, oh, it'll sweet. give you an option to save. And then yeah. Y, yeah. Oh, okay. So this is what you're talking about. So it wants to save that, but it can't, or can it? Right. Okay. Wait, so oh. what's the reason that you're oh. editing? Uh, uh, the... you're, using, you're using tabs instead of spaces. Yeah. Oh, is that the problem? I'm using, well, yeah, but shouldn't it just, what? Why, why has that ever been a problem? YAML, YAML doesn't know about tabs. It only knows about spaces. Uh, that's supposed to go in one more level for the name. In one more level? Oh, like, see how that line, the line should be under the E, the, or the hyphen. Oh, my bad. Dash. Yeah. And then, yeah. Okay. Does that work? This, Guess we'll find out. <laughs> that looks that looks like a properly for, uh, formatted YAML file. Yeah, it does. Okay, now what happened? Uh, okay, so this is like my favorite word processor. Um, kind of like if a you do editor, like capital, capital text, editor equals, and then vi or vim or whatever your editor is, that'll set your default editor to be something a bit more friendly. But why don't we try something before you do that? Do kubectl rollout restart demo. Um, do, a, do a get deployments. Oh, you have to do deployment slash demo. I missed that. Oh, that's you what have to I tell us the deployment. Yeah. yeah. I'm letting you drive here. I'm just like, I'm going on autopilot. I'm like, ah, oh, crap. Okay. Deployment slash demo. Um, yeah. Now it's going to restart that. Um, I had noticed that it hasn't restarted demo. Okay. It probably had already executed a bunch of times. Um, so let's see. Yeah, see, it's bringing the new one up, and when the new one's live, it'll then delete the old one. Yeah. So Mario, what's happened there is you did the port forward and it for, port, port, forward the port to the old pod and then the old pod finished deleting. So your port forward broke. Because port forward always ties itself to a specific pod, even if you call it as a service. Okay. Yay, sort of. Sort of, yeah. Uh, why it's not found is, uh, isn't it count? Oh, it's post. My bad. Yeah, it's supposed to be a post. Okay. Only problem is that I'm still getting hello. Um, okay. Uh, why would I get? Why would I get hello? I know I'm getting hello because I'm an idiot sometimes, and sometimes you do things that probably defy uh, what you expect, right? Post. Uh, so if I did HTTP po and I post it to, this is an this is an earlier instance of that demo that I wrote. And oddly enough, it's I could have been sure I I, uh, I pushed it. Didn't I push it earlier? I know I pushed it. Yeah, I know I pushed it. Um, okay. I changed the image name. I did a lot of different things suddenly. Shouldn't be so much difference. Uh, it's Mario Gary slash demo dash buoy, and I called it. Uh, that's why. Uh, that's right. Actually, demo buoy is the current existing uh, one. So, why? So, my question is uh, uh, my question is am I using the right version of my. Of my um, Container, and probably not. I'm probably using an old version. No, it is. It's Mario Grace Last Demo Buoy, and that's the one that just pushed. So why is it returning hello? So 
What did I do? Bowie O, Snapshot, Mario Grace, Let's Demo Bowie, and then push. Yeah, that's right. So, it's supposed to return just, a log. Just to make sure you're being precise, I yeah, would I'm maybe tag it. Yeah. I would tag it with the with a tag of latest when you do the push. Okay. And then I would also make sure you've got that tag in the uh, deployment.yaml. Okay. Okay. Oh no. Yeah, that's right. Uh, what? Max retries count parameters connection error. Post. Okay. It should be a number. But why is it? Why is it letters? Why is it words? Oh, oh, that gives me a little for compass. I mean, okay, let's try this. Um, Oh, did I? Of course, I did the wrong one. I know what I did wrong, guys. I built an image on the uh, on a on an earlier version of the demo, which included a, a hello as its message. Uh, so if you want to give me a second, I can at least, at the very least, at the very least, compile, deploy, and and uh, I need to be able to push this into a um, the the idea that I was that I did earlier at least was I pushed it into an unstable state where the application won't run, or the application would just restart. But right now it's just restarting rather than allowing me to push it into that state. So try not to, I'd rather debug the, the, the YAML part than debug the application. Although I can probably do, probably do both. So let's try Docker. So what did you say I should do something like, um, And you were using demo dash buoy as well. I was. You're right. Oh God. Yes. Okay. And I think in your Maven config, you can override the uh, the image name and tag, so you wouldn't need to do the retagging. Okay. Did okay. you push latest? What do you mean? Did, did, I, you, did I do latest? Did I do that? Yeah, cool. It's happy. Good enough. Okay. Just making sure. Okay. So I did that. Um, can I, um, let's see, k git pods. Uh, let's kill something. Uh, so you shouldn't need to kill anything. If you, oh. if you change the deployment to use the latest tag, and then just reapply it, it should do a rolling upgrade to the new version. Ah, there you are. Okay, so I so that should be the one that I I should get the result from this guy here. Give it a second. Mm -hmm. 
So there's this guy here. Yeah. Yeah, so uh -huh. it's doing a rolling upgrade right now. So that looks like it's working. So the old one is terminating. Okay, great. Please let there be a number. Um, no, that's not right. No, you need to redo your port forward, don't you? Because then you port Yeah, and also have this guy running as well in the background. Yeah. Uh, oh, huh. that'll do it. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I close the terminal and use my brain for a second here. So there should be nothing good. Okay. Oh, what do you mean? Hello? Oh, you like that? Don't you? Sorry, not you, not you. <clears throat> let's, let's, uh, Okay, well, I, I know I'm, I'm deploying the right one. It's, and, uh, it's not something silly, like you need a slash after the count or something like that? No, no, that's not it. Uh, so let me, let me get the status. Still up. You know, I, I feel kind of like yeah, okay, demo. You're you're supposed to be a demo. You're not supposed to be a a, a production worthy application yet. I mean, obviously you, you would take the pieces of this and turn it into a production worthy application. But why don't you work for me right now, huh? That type of thing. That's that's my question for my demo. <laughs> hey, what while you've got this up, do you want to go down to the bottom and change your service type to be load balancer? Oh, yeah. And then reapply it? And let's see if we can get the Minikube load balancer working, and that'll save you from your port forwarding. Okay. So I can just go ahead and hit apply on this? Yep. Okay. So look... Uh, uh, now if you do a kubectl get service demo... Okay. And now if you do a, I think it's Minikube space IP... Uh, and then space dash dash service space demo, I think. Oh, uh, no, I got it wrong. All right. Minikube IP dash dash help. That's just what? Help. Oh, help. Yes. Uh, options. Uh, IP uh, flags options. Interesting. Global command line options apply to all commands. Is it Minikube service IP? I was sure it was just... Ah. Well, there's this guy. Yeah, there it is. So that that URL is given you with the 32652 port. If you oh, hit that, yeah. that'll be it. How, how are you there? Oh, because you got to be post. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, so oh, that's pretty cool. Um, I wrote a command a while ago because I wrote a command a while ago that would take that data and then turn it into an HTTP command, and now it's lost, but I'm not going to worry about it now. Um, I'm kind of, I'm wondering why, all right, so I'm going to take this guy, this path, and I'm going to say, um, give me status, and don't post to it because there's no post. Uh, that's definitely a git. I should change that to be a git, not a post. I don't know why I made it a git. I'm going to get post. Um, okay. So this is not the right image. I'm not, I am, what I'm looking at right here is a, is a different version uh, of the program. 
I, at this point, I'm wondering if if uh, if I name something wrong or if I have something sticking around. But what I'll do is I'll rename the whole thing so I don't have that like you know issue. I guess um, that can help. So also I, maybe just search your code for hello and just quickly look to see if it looks normal. There, yeah, there is no hello in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was. It's just a. It's just a. It's just a. It should be a number, not a. Uh, what well, what's the opposite of a buoy? What, what's a probe? Buoy probe? B probe? B probe? B probe? How about how about I call it? Uh, uh, An anchor. It sinks. I don't know. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, anchor. I, uh, did you did you run the code locally and check that it was still giving the hello? Uh, yes. Yes. I mean, I must have done that at least once. Yes. That, that was a very innocent yes. <laughs> yes, you ran Maybe. it locally. Maybe. Yes, I ran it locally. It, it's, um, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's see what goes on here. And let's say HTTP localhost port 8080 slash count. Um, yes, it should be fine. It should just say, okay, we're going to be listening and we'll return. Don't forget to post. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you keep reminding me that I, that I had to make it a post instead of a get. How about that? How about we do that first? How about this? How about we turn that from a get, from a post to a get? I like it. Oh, yes. Okay, so let's run that. It'll take five seconds to run. Um, and, and now I don't have to use post anymore. I was being fancy by by um, being too fancy. You don't don't need to be fancy with that all, all post stuff, man. You know, like every now and then, I think post is the only way to go. Um, and, and it might be true for a lot of things that like you just wanted to like say here, hit the bell. That's a post, but for a demo, obviously nobody's going to care. Okay, so you sir have a count, and you, you deserve to return with one. Or anything for that matter. Oh, you're still running. Oh, God. What, what is this running on? Like a Raspberry Pi or something? Yes. Oh, that's why it's so slow. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Man, everyone's going to think. Everyone's going to think on this thing too. Everyone's going to think Spring is really slow, and the reality is just Mario is really slow. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, we already know. I mean, first of all, okay, so now we have three, two, one. Let's do the actuator called liveness. It should be down or dead. Oh, readiness, sorry. Readiness. Okay. Okay, so this seems to be working right. Yes. So let's do the rebuild, and then we'll give it a, just a different name with the tagging. So do the make me an image thing again, yeah. Okay, what did I do here? What what have I what have I destroyed? I I literally destroyed something here. Latch await await publish countdown latch depletion liveness state is broken. Uh, delay. Uh, I think I'm gonna try something new. Now, since this is running on a Pi, does that mean it's also uh, an ARM processor? Um, yeah, it would be, yes. Qualified. Yeah, so you're also uh, doing all this stuff on ARM. So you've got Docker on ARM. You've got, I guess, the image is being built as an ARM. It's pretty cool. Okay. And the mini cubes all running on the same thing, right? Um, let me see. Um, no, Mr. It's... 
Uh, I exaggerated a little bit here. See, it, it, my computer is slow. My, my computer is it, my computer is extremely slow. Just understand my computer's like, let's see. Right. Uh, pi at UMA. Let's see how UMA th or something like that. It's extremely, extremely slow. So will it log in? Does it, does it hear me? It's, I don't know if it's there anymore. Is your water boiling yet? No. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have a ton of memory free on this thing. Uh, I can't. I can't show you what the simp what the temperatures are, but there's a lot of temperature. It's it's pretty hot. It's hot. How about that? It's it's just very hot. So. The next thing I should do is tag this guy here, Docker, tag, uh, boo, boo, nah. And then tag it something that you would have definitely never ever called another image before. Oh, I know. Um, gearhead. How about that? How about Mario Gear slash Gearhead? Yes, but don't use capitals. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then colon latest. And then push that. Okay, let's go to this deployment and then use Gearhead. Did I use a, a dash in Gearhead? No. No. I would just suck. I did. Why would you do that, Mario? Why? Okay, so this is definitely a different image to what you had earlier because it's actually pushing stuff. It's not using the cache. Okay. So this okay. is a good sign. Okay. Come on, you can shut down. Okay. Oh, there we are. On that. Just set it to one instead. This is for my local run. It still will take three, but I want to see what happens if I just. I don't need to have it like so high where I have to ping it multiple times. All right, so um, can I just do apply? Uh, this will take the image called Gearhead and it calls it demo. Uh, should I give it another namespace? Should I or just the image? Don't even worry about that. Yeah, just just the image. The rest is fine. So we have this guy here. Hi. You know, um, my arm has eight co four cores. That's that's about as many as an iPhone. Ostensibly, it's it's an iPhone. Okay, but I don't see actuator. Do I? Yes, they got fourteen endpoints under actuator. So HD. Oh right, right, right. Uh... You didn't change your service, so that previous HTTP command you run will still ran will still work. <laughs> it says something, it says it was configured, so something changed with the service. Yes. Oh, 32652. Yeah, you're right. No, you need to use. Um, it's good. Oh, what happened? That's right. I'm sorry. I think there was a 192 address you had to use. Oh, oh, okay. I gotta use that one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I remember. This is actually curling the IP address of Minikube itself. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay. So now we have that. Um, count two, one, zero. Application readiness. You did not change my status. 
Mister, why? Why are you doing this to me? At least he doesn't say hello anymore. Yes, that's true. Um, I'm going to test a couple of things. Um, I'm going to shut this down. What will happen? It didn't shut down the container. I'm going to have to redo this talk. I am. I know. No, you only get one chance at it. I know. And you, blew, and you blew it. I totally blew it here. Um, it needs to shut down. Um, check, okay. uh, check its logs, see if it's saying anything about why it's not shutting down. Or maybe it just takes a while to shut down gracefully. Try turning it off and turning it on again. Oh, boy. No. Nope. That was the best, oh, boy. That was... Perfect. Oh, look, it's just gone to unready state. Oh, and then it restarted. Okay, that's good, kind of, but I wanted it to shut down. Well, it did shut down, but I think the deployment would have then started up a new one. No. Yes. Oh. No, because it's, no. it's inside the same it's deployment. The same so. It's in the same pod. Oh. Yeah, so shutting it down starts it up later. Um, okay. There is a lot to know. There is a, a whole lot to demystify here. Now, um, if I can get one thing working correctly, the way it worked on my machine a minute ago, I'd be a little, I'm, I'm kind of happy right now, but um, that's not what I wanted to do. That's okay, that's fine. So what I guess what will happen is if I, if I, if I push it down, it'll restart. Um, I obviously wasn't able to make it shut down using my slash count jig, uh, I call it a gimmick, because I think that it didn't reach that execution, that code. And um, I'm, I'm about to put a print statement in here and, and say, okay, well, there, at least at some point it should go, okay, you're not running anymore. I was able to, I was able to bring it up and bring it down um, with ease. Uh, and then I changed one thing and now, now it doesn't want to, no, it doesn't want to listen to me anymore. This is good, though. This is like a huge learning. This is a huge jumping point for me to learn from so that I can uh, get this down like 100% with, uh, with, with the actual things that, needed to, that need to work, which are your life. Well, basically, the liveness is supposed to say, okay, well, if you're, if you're not in the upstate anymore, then uh, we could restart. So I want it, I want it to restart. Um, However, I only wanted to restart when I hit the countdown latch. Uh, that is when this await stops and then my availability change event gets published. Um, that should tell it to restart. Right now, it's, it didn't do that. Um, and I think it has to do with maybe I didn't declare it correctly. No, I give it a bean. It is a bean. Um, it is a command line runner, so it'll run when it needs to start. Uh, it is running on a single thread. I did hold the thread, and then when that thread is done being held, it just publishes this, uh, and it says your liveness state is broken. Um, and it should go from state up to state broken. Um, but I didn't see that happen over the past hour, either locally or uh, in the cloud. So that means I did some, I've done something horribly wrong here. Um, there is an explosion on the flight deck type of deal. Um, what I will do is is um, better an expo explosion on the flight deck than an explosion on the poop deck. On either deck, I mean on any deck, but um, I'm supposed to be able to measure that count gets to zero and then exits and then restarts and go yay it restarted and exited so now we know it responds to life cycle awareness. Um, uh, I would like that. Let's see. Oops, did I start it somewhere? Yeah, I did. I started it right here. Okay, so yeah, I start we are very we are very close to needing to wrap up. So maybe another five minutes. That's fine, but give me a second. Let me uh, let me try doing one more thing. I, I wanna uh, I wanna I'm gonna debug. I'm in a debugging mood right now. You ever get there? I'm here. I'm I'm in a. 
We're in a debugging mood. I've definitely been there. The I just want it to work. If I just do this one more thing, it hopefully will work. I don't. I don't know. I get to. I think. Um. I think I debug less often than I should, which means I'm always flying with what I have, putting it into somewhere, running it, testing it, and being done. I didn't write any tests for this. That's probably one of the major hiccups here was I wrote no tests. You, you know, you, you know you've done wrong if, you, if you've gone a whole day with writing code, but you didn't write any tests. So there's something for me to learn. My, my takeaway is write more tests, damn it. Um, let's see. So it's zero, and I should see we are shut. Yeah, okay, so that did happen. Uh, so that works. So that availability change set, did I, uh, did I, did it get auto wired? My event publisher is auto wired. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for this broken demonstration, Paul. I am. Um, this will go. Hey, to, why are you blaming me? It's not your fault. I'm saying that thank you for allowing me to break this demonstration as much as I've broken it today. Oh, um, you're welcome. These are hard things, man. These are uh, these are one of the these are hard things that that take time to get distilled. And as you see, um, it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this. You, you have to be doing this over and over and over and over. And I've only started doing this over and over and over and over while you guys have been doing this over and over and over for a longer time than I have. Um, but um, next time, this thing is dead, first of all. Um, I'll just publish a, maybe a blog about it instead and say, you remember that talk I, did, I gave where nothing worked? Well, yeah, that's what it's going to have to, that's what I'm going to have to evolve to, um, to a blog post because this, this is fine. This is really good debugging. Thank you very much for assisting me with the with the uh, system administrivi, administri administrivia because I am really needing those skills, a lot of skills, obviously, but you know, you helped me a lot there with the uh, system in parts. You but most of all is is uh, getting that information out and like making it work in front of people. Um, mm -hmm. This needed to go better. So I need so to- I just, wanna, I just wanna clear up. Yeah. So when you hit the count endpoint, that was supposed to get into like a countdown that caused the liveness check to fail. Correct. So it wouldn't exit the app, right? It would just cause the liveness check to uh, fail. No, um, it would publish a broken liveness state. Right. So it would. But it, it wouldn't actually shut yes, down. It would cause it And then it would rely on yes, Kubernetes to cause the. Yeah, that that's that down. one that one solution yeah. was to just to show that you can break liveness state while the app is running in a Kubernetes environment, the liveness state will tell, you know, the manager, Hey, um, we have to restart this guy yeah. and it'll, it'll do that thing, which we were able to do by, by hitting the shutdown, right? We were able to go to, you know, uh, uh, actuator hit shutdown and it, and it shut it down, but it just restarted. I didn't configure shutdown anyway. I, um, that was really, uh, if hell Mary, if it doesn't work, then shutdown will work. And it does work, but it had the effect of only having it recycled, um, which is fine, I guess. But most of all, we wanted this this guy here because that's a completely different endpoint, um, and we wanted that you know configured checker, the the liveness probe checker, which was every five seconds, to then take advantage of the fact that liveness state said down, um, and then it would it would restart the app. Now. For whatever reason, uh, I botched it, and um, I'll pay for it. I'll buy you guys lunch, and if anybody out there wants to know, I, I owe them lunch too. But you'll have, um, to, you'll have to postmates it to us because it's going to be a while before we see each other. I mean, yeah, you, you're going to get. So the thing is, is that we're a wired. pack of ramen in the in the mail. Yeah, a little bag, a little bag of, of, uh, of uh, you know ramen that's. Spicy, please. Um, I hate that stuff. Ramen Paul makes. It looked really good. A vacuum steel bag of ramen. Uh, it could work. Um. Yeah. Let me get back to this and and roll 
with a version that will at some point uh, do what I need it to do. So, all right. All right, that's where I'm at right oh, now. We, we all showed our cameras because we thought we were finished. Do we all need to hide ourselves again? <laughs> I, I have a feeling that this is going to have to be finished offline. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, you're here. Oh, boy. Hey. I hear Bob's voice. Hi, Bob. Hi. Hello Hi, I also... Pressure. Pressure. Hi, Bob. Sorry, Bob. Um, I, uh, Bob, I, uh, I had a, I had a, I had a brain hiccup where, where I was pretty sure I can get through a whole entire thing without a, uh, 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 hiccup. Well, as, as our good friend Java Grant posted, he's, he, a lot of people, they'd like to, they like to hear the brain thinking out loud. Like, like it, it doesn't always have to go smoothly. And then it's fun to hear how you like debug it if as best as you can. And, and adding Paul and, and Tiffany in there was, was really nice. So it's, it is what it is. I know that as far as you go, you'd like it to work because that's who you are. And I know you will make it work. It just didn't but work. But it's also right. very fun for us <laughs> to be able to say, Mario, you're doing it wrong. You're Thanks. Well, or I mean, do this, do us, that. <laughs> We're so amazing. Know, I have something to. I have to. Uh, yeah, I'm getting really. I'm getting really uh, anxious about publishing. <laughs> we can uh, see that <laughs> the train wreck that I am. I don't think anybody wants to read that train wreck, but I, I'll get the information out there if it helps anybody. Um, but you guys. Well, so the good thing is, I didn't, when, I, I didn't do anything. You guys just kind of. You can write an article on the Tanzu developer portal that finishes it off and then we can link it to the Tanzu TV episode and we can link the Tanzu TV episode to it and that way we will close the circle. And oh. it creates more content for us all. Oh, that sounds That's nice. Right. It's a win-win. Well, if you promise that, then okay. But, um, but like, you know, that's awesome. Okay, so let's get that out there. Let's... um. Let's make this thing work, and then and then uh, publish some words underneath it, and say, "Hey, remember that video? Don't look at that video. Okay, do look at that video if you really want to, but you're not going to get much out of it except for Tiffany and Paul telling me that I'm wrong um, for for a good solid hour. But you you need that every now and then. As a developer, you, you I need it. You I've need gone it. through a, that that pain. I need that pain. I need it. It like I thrive on it. If, uh, during your life pain. is pain, your highness, and anyone else who says differently is selling you something. Yeah, I need that PR. That 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 you're in a PR right now type of pain, and, and like you just done fu you effed up something on there, you know, type of stuff. The one where you like want to go for a coffee every five minutes. Like, okay, am I done yet? <laughs> God, which one of these PRs? Compiling. Uh, that time that I woke up in a PR in the office at four o'clock in the morning, and it was it was uh, PRing JavaScript code for four hours straight. Oh, yeah, Bob, Bob, this guy is never going to shut up, so I think we're going to need nope. to step in. We and forgot to do our uh, announcements at the top, so we're doing real quick. Don't forget tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be doing a look back at Spring One 2020. I'm going to be the main host. We're going to do a fireside chat with all the other hosts from the other uh channels there were five tracks um for spring one you can go to spring one.io right now and watch all of the tracks they're posted so if you missed anything you want to rewatch, go there now but if you want to tune in tomorrow and you can do q a and kind of interact with us you need to go to spring one tour.io register tomorrow from 9 till about 10 30 we're gonna be talking all things spring one 2020 a retro it's gonna be great uh, at the end of this month, which is next week, is VM World, September 29th through October 1st. I, I think there's like 120,000 people registered or something like that. It's unbelievable. unbelievable. It's great. It's uh, it's all online. It's all virtual. They're doing, you know, different time zones. So if you're watching uh, in other parts of the world, you know, there's going to be stuff for you during the time of day that you want to watch it, as well as uh, some recorded stuff that you can watch on demand that our friend and uh, co-host Paul will be doing. You want to talk about that? Mine, mine will be blabbing even doing? when I'm not awake. See? Oh, oh VMworld. VM yes. Yeah, VMworld. Yeah, VMworld. Yeah, yeah. I will be talking about. Actually, both Tiffany and I are talking about the same uh, rough subject. It's just that Tiffany's actually doing it. Well, I'm, I'm just talking about it. Uh, talking head, Paul. And that is basically 
doing production-like operations on Kubernetes. And Tiffany, you're, you're going to be showcasing what that's like. Yeah, it's, it's if you watch the spring one, it's the same thing. But and the Tanzu uh, Tuesdays was a longer version of that. So last week's Tanzu. Oh yeah, are... skip 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 VM World because the best content for VM World was actually on Tanzu Tuesdays last week. <laughs> I don't think we could say that, Paul. Uh, so well, we just said it. <laughs> just said it. Not um, we, you. You said it, Paul. I think it was Mario. Sharknado, Tarkovsky. And then always, uh, just to let you know, we're, we're adding a whole bunch of new stuff at TV. It'll be on your Twitch. So if you like our channel, when this channel starts to activate, you'll get a notice. Uh, so Tangent Tuesdays, obviously. Then we have Code tomorrow. Mario's been on that. Tomorrow, I think, is Jakob? Or is it Mark Heckler? Mark Heckler is on. Mark Heckler is tomorrow, and Jakob's next week. Heckler. So we have uh, we have like our incredible spring advocates are coding live every Wednesday at twelve Pacific, and then we mirror TGIK every Friday at one PM Pacific. Um, so that's the YouTube show that we just show on our channel, and then uh, there's a whole bunch of Spring One tours uh, from previous, and so yeah, we just we got lots of great content. Go to Tansy.tv, check it out. We miss everybody, and we want to see you all in person. And until then, we'll keep seeing you every Tuesday. I missed everybody.